Uh, Madam Kep, you, you come from a very respected family of service to the country, and you yourself brokered talks between Hun Sen, uh, at that time the strong man in Phnom Penh already, and Prince Zuanek Zianuk at the time. Uh, what was your impression of the young Hun Sen? Um, when I met him the first time on uh, 1987, is the first time, uh, I saw one uh, very um, uh, shy man, very young, you see. Um, when he talked to me, um, it seemed that he would like, at that time, he would like to do something for his country. He um, told me that he uh, came from a very poor family, so he understood what is it, uh, uh, poverty, what is it, um, uh, the uh, people who need to be uh, helped, uh, and he wish was to, to help uh, Cambodian people to uh, to develop the country because we just uh, finished the period of Khmer Rouge, you see. Um, at that time, I believe on him. I think a lot of people believe on him at that time, saying that if we have a leader who came from a poor family, he understood very well what is it uh, become hungry, you know. Yeah. So. Yeah, these talks led to the peace agreements in 1991, and then came the UN who organized and supervised elections. Hun Sen surprisingly didn't win the elections, but he still didn't give up, give up power. Would you say that he stole the elections? Um, the election on, on 1993 uh, for me was the only one election that we can say is credible, mean that uh, free and fair, despite a lot of violence, uh, despite a lot of violence. Why? Because the election uh, was organized by um, UN. So UN was neutral and partial, and I think that the result was quite good. And the ruling, the uh, CPP at that time lost the election. Um, of course, CPP didn't accept at that time the uh, result of election, but Cambodian people, they accept. Yeah, and uh, unfortunately, there was no uh, opposition at that time. They decided to make in the name of. Uh, um, reconciliation, so the three parties that had the seat in the National Assembly make a, a coalition government. It's not a good idea. It should be maybe two out of the, there were four in fact. One had only one, Mulinaka. Mul, 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 so uh, for us, civil society, we wish to see maybe two uh, to uh, political party uh, set up a government and one in the opposition. Because opposition is important to have check in the balance in the National Assembly and for, for, the, uh, for the people also. If you don't have opposition, you know, um, there is no, pers no way that you can see if the government worked well, if something was wrong. The opposition can say, okay, this is not a good idea. So you have check and balance. But you have had uh, regular elections ever since. Would you say that this is just the facade of a democracy? Um, if you look at election, a democratic election, a real democratic election. The institution that organize election should be independent. If it's not independent, how you can trust that election? Um, in Cambodia, since uh, 93, it was uh, UN. But 98, the um, institution that organized the election is dominated by the ruling party. 
So I think that it's difficult for Cambodian people to uh, say that election is uh, impartial, is uh, uh, neutral, is uh, credible. Election is not only for political party, it's for everybody. All the people who have the right to vote should accept the result. If they don't accept, it's not credible, see. Uh, if you travel your country, you notice the, the signboards on the streets of the CPP. They seem to be everywhere, while the other parties have only a few offices here and there. Are they really in control of the whole population? Um, they have the right to put the sign everywhere, you see. Uh, and we receive some information that sometimes the sign of uh, other political party were pulled out, etc., etc. Uh, and we notice also that some uh, um, asset of the state were used for the election. You see, um, there is no, there is a big gap between. Uh, the ruling party and other party. The ruling party control uh, all the media, almost almost all, mean that the television, all the channel of television in Cambodia uh, are affiliated to the ruling party. They also control most of the radio station, except very few. And uh, the uh, writing paper also, most are affiliated to the ruling party. Very few newspapers belong to the um, opposition or neutral. You have two uh, English uh, newspapers quite independent. Now, now that the list of uh, candidates has been published for the elections at the end of July, there, are, there is a, a son of Hun Sen on the list and also his son-in-law. Do you have a feeling that he wants to establish some kind of family business there? Um, some people think like that, but I heard the Prime Minister uh, deny that and he said, no, uh, don't speak about nepotism. I would like only to promote uh, uh, young generation. So this is what he said. And in the list, we have other son of elite also. And if we uh, talk about the list of the, the, elect, uh, the voter, um, recently, an um, international um, NGO from the United States, NDI, National Democratic Institute, with a local NGO, uh, Nick Fight, Neutral and Independent uh, uh, Committee for Free and Fair Election. They make a survey of the, they make the audit of the list of the voter. And they found out that more than 9% of the name in the list didn't exist. It exists in the, uh, the list, but you cannot find the, the name in among the, the people, so it grows. Please. And also, 90%, um, about 90% also, of the, uh, the, the people in the list, they, are, they didn't have the name where I raised, the name where I raised. So a lot, you see, almost 20% of people, if it's a uh, ghost name, it means that what is it, these people? People didn't exist. And also people who have the name erased. And also they found out that some of the, uh, the name uh, didn't have their um, uh, birthday match with the birthday of the uh, electoralist. So these people might not be allowed to vote the day of election. So uh, it's this kind of irregularity will have a big impact on the result. 
but if there are such irregularities, where can you complain? Can you go to a court? Uh, what do you do with this information? Uh, for us, uh, civil society, we, we, be, we will become only observer. We cannot become monitor. Observer means that we can only observe and we cannot file a complaint. We can put in our report. Um, only the uh, representative of the uh, political party, they have the status of monitor. It means that they can file the complaint to, first of all, to the uh, um, uh, National Election Committee, NEC. Uh, they can complain to the court. They can complain to also the last institution is the Constitutional Council. But if I remember uh, during the uh, former election, um, they complained, but the result was not very positive. Because NEC, uh, NEC majority of the uh, member of NEC belong to the ruling party. And some member, uh, one or two members sometimes belong to the uh, uh, opposition, so it's not, uh, there is no um, balance. We would like, we always, civil society, we always uh, made the request to NEC to change the uh, composition, uh, maybe not of the NEC, National Election Committee, in the level of uh, national, national level, but we would like to change the uh, composition of the uh, Provincial Election Committee, PEC, and also the composition of the uh, Communal Election Committee, SEC, and also the composition of the official that work in the polling station. But the NEC uh, didn't take our um, recommendation into account. Mm. Yeah. But as observers, you, you are able to move freely and, and to raise complaints and to advise people, or is it difficult or even dangerous to be an observer? Um, first of all, we had to apply. And last election, uh, we applied maybe a little bit late, so the NEC didn't give us uh, uh, permission, but we can stay outside of the polling station. The problem of uh, observer, uh, the day of election, what you can observe inside the polling station, there is not so much to observe. It will be outside to see how many people had their name erased. And for us, you know, we can move, we can go, but if we cannot complain, if we cannot change uh, the situation, it's useless. We always make many recommendations during the uh, election time, and we can see that our recommendation we are not taking into consideration. Mm -hmm. And the observer from abroad also, from foreigner also, like uh, EU used to send long-term observer, short observer, the day of election, they make a lot of recommendation, but if you look at the recommendation, the recommendation we are not implement. So it's very difficult to, 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 to um, make the um, statement and to say that election will be free and fair. Free and fair, I, I can say that 93 election, it was free and fair. All the people, almost all, virtually almost all people were registered. And we had a, a voter card. Uh, some people who, who stay in the very remote area, they cannot come to register it. UN called UNTA at that time, United Nations for Transitional Period in Cambodia. They sent mobile team to see them and to make the registration card, uh, voter card for them. Inside prison, some prisoners still have the right to vote. And the director of prison said, no, we don't have enough staff to bring 
these these uh, prisoner outside of prison to register. UN said, all right, we go inside the prison and we make the registration for them. And the day of election, and, and they postponed sometimes three months, one month, to be able to register people. And also the day of election, they have mobile team also to go allow people in prison in the remote area to vote. So this is free. And also uh, for uh, radio, they have the same time. Television also is was controlled by uh, by UN because UN controlled five ministry. I remember they controlled the Ministry of uh, Information, so they gave the same time in the press, writing press, in radio, in television. So, so it's much more fair election, you see. Mm. And given that background and involvement of the international community. Are you disappointed that the EU, EU says it will not send election observers this time? Uh, this time, um, um, when I heard that, yes, I said, oh, I'm a little bit disappointed. But when UN explained to me, I understand the situation. UN said, no, we don't send because as we send in the previous uh, election, and they don't take into uh, uh, consideration our uh, recommendation. Why would we go back again and make again and again and again the same recommendation? I understand. So the explanation, I accept it. You see?